It would be silly to say that Apple's latest iteration of the 15-inch 2015 MacBook Pro with Retina display is the best MacBook yet because, well, that's the truth with every new model. Unfortunately, you won't find a shiny new processor set up this time around as Apple's stuck with the trusty old Haswell configuration. The good news is there's a bump in clock speed across the board, and if it matters to you, we also have a completely new GPU setup thanks to AMD in the high-end model. If you'd like to check out the full specifications for this MacBook Pro, I will leave them linked down below for you. Just in case you're curious, I went with the 2.8 GHz configuration with 1 TB of flash storage after a lot of internal debating, but I felt like it was worth the extra cash. As expected though, we have a beautiful retina display here with a resolution of 2880 by 1800 that's good for 220 pixels per inch. Apple's new 2015 MacBook and MacBook Pro lineup also include the new Force Touch trackpad which comes along with some cool features. but none of them are particularly useful to me, though if you'd like to check out all of the Force Touch features available, I'll leave a video linked below for you. Instead of focusing this review on how great or poor this MacBook is for everyone, I'm going to tell you how it works for me. I make videos, and most of those videos happen to be in 4K resolution, so it should be no surprise that I'd need something powerful to get the job done when I'm on the go. Also, if you're interested in that sweet carbon fiber skin I'm rocking on this MacBook Pro, I picked it up from dbrand and I will leave it linked below for you. I actually edited this entire review and this MacBook's unboxing video on, well, itself, and if you'd like to check out that unboxing video with benchmarks and comparisons to the other 15-inch configurations, I will leave that down below for you but Premiere Pro CC, After Effects, and Photoshop run like a boss on this thing. If you need something completely capable of any media related task, I'd highly recommend it. I was able to export my 3 minute and 14 second unboxing video of this MacBook with After Effects compositions in under 10 minutes, which is pretty good in my opinion. My last MacBook Pro was clocked at 2.3 GHz, which is pretty fast, but I can definitely tell the difference here. As for benchmarks on this beast, Geekbench 3 produced a single core score of 3894 and a multi-core score of 14807. Over in Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, we have read speeds as high as 1700 megabytes per second and write speeds over 1400 megabytes per second. I'm not a huge gamer, but I did test out a couple of titles for those curious out there. In Counter-Strike Global Offensive, I saw a consistent 30 frames per second with all settings on maximum and full resolution of the MacBook's panel, but the game was a bit laggy. Bringing down the resolution a bit though made it completely playable. I also gave Bioshock Infinite a run and it played buttery smooth at the max settings and full resolution available. I'm not a gaming expert, but from my testing, this MacBook is more than capable of handling a few good titles. For myself, this MacBook has been a dream so far. It's a very powerful laptop for my needs, but it's obviously not for everyone. This specific configuration will set you back roughly $3,200, which definitely made my wallet sad, but it's also nice to know that I'll have a very reliable editing machine when on the go, and a laptop that can handle pretty much anything I'd throw at it. If you're looking for a 15-inch for everyday use, I'd recommend the base model MacBook Pro, which comes in around $2,000, but I'll leave all of the models linked down below for you. Personally, I plan on keeping this MacBook around for a while, and it looks like it'll be able to keep up with me. So let me know what you think in the comments section below, and if you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave it a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching, everybody. This is Dom, and I'll catch you in the next one.